So a while back, I had made a video showing how this printer was, describing the issue. The main issue was when I started printing, it had a heat error on the E1, which is the hot end. Well, it took me a while. I decided to just cut off the cable for the, the heating cartridge or the mister and replace it with a new one. But before I went through all that work, because if you notice, this is 500 millimeter tall. I have to take all this wiring out, go to the board. It, it's, it's a challenge, a lot of work. Fun, rewarding, but a lot of work still. I cut those off and instead of going through all that work, I just put the new heating cartridge and the new thermistor, plugged it directly to the board, cables out, came over here and plugged it in. Or I should say plugged it in the, uh, in the boiler board and placed them over here. And when I tested that out, they worked like a charm, no problem. So I said, Eureka, it's either the thermistor or the heating cartridge. That's where it hit me. I should have done that test before, at least before cutting it off. But I'm one of those people who just decide to work on things. If I don't do it, I, I keep on doing more tests. Not to cut it off, I decide I'll just bite the bullet, cut it off, and whatever was bad is bad. So I, one of the things I did was I, I replaced the, the wrap that I had before with this graded one, which is what reality gives on their machine. And I bought a roll of that and placed it all the way through the cables. It was a nightmare. Not a fun nightmare, but it was a nightmare. So I got that installed. Once I had everything set, I decided to print. Well, before printing, I decided to just see if it would reach the temperature. Because before, at a set temperature of 210, it stopped at 200 and it started floating around 198 to 200 maybe tops 200 201 maybe but honestly it just would ever out after a while because it would understand there's a problem heating so i decided to do the same thing so i have everything installed click there temperature set the temperature of the nozzle and to my surprise same thing happened now why would it happen now and not before when i tested this well, I did extend the wires for the mister and for the hot end. So if you're, maybe the wire is defective? But really, how can a wire be defective? It could be damaged internally, I won't say no. But then, why did I get continuity? I moved it all around. Those are small tests that I do. So I found that hard. And I did solder these, so it's not like a loose connection. I soldered these, I hitched, I did some heat shrinking to me on them, place them on. So it was a nice job, and I liked how it came out. But what was the problem? So, I looked at this fan here. And as I looked at this fan, this fan is quiet, but it was going super fast. I took it out, I checked the voltage, and it's 24 volts. That's fine. I mean, this is a 24 volt system. I was wondering, perhaps I, for some reason, I might have had a 12 volt on this and it was going super fast. Well, 12 volts could have burned out, but as Murphy says, or Murphy's Law, something's gonna go, if something's going to happen, it will happen. Now, this printer I bought off of eBay, it was a return unit, and to say it's a return unit, as an understatement, because whoever had this before, made sure that whoever got it later have to work on it. One thing, the, the original, this is direct drive now, but originally how it was set up, the extruder motor was bad. I had to change the extruder motor when I went to direct drive. You notice that. The, the carriage was installed incorrectly because it never hit the micro switch. Uh, this is a modification I did to it. Then on the Z, it, something I can't remember exactly what it was. I had a problem with the Z also. I had a problem with the Y. Yeah, I had a problem with all the letters of the alphabet for crying out loud. Then the board was the the 8-bit board, so I updated it to a 4.2.7 and well, long story short on this, after several modifications it turns out I basically changed a lot of the parts besides the board, the motor 
turning it to a uh, direct drive. I changed it to an all metal hot end from Micro Swiss. Um, they, they, uh, for the filament sensor, I installed that. All right, so enough of me whining about what I had to change on this. What was going wrong? Well, I decided to take this off. And then it, I said, no, I'll just place something in there. So I installed the fan. And I noticed the temperature started to rise. And it kept on rising. So I let the fan go. And of course, the temperature went down as a rock. Then I decided, well, I'm just going to see if I could cover that heating block with a silicone sock. And it's not fitted properly. Yes, yeah, so you could, you could crucify me if you want. It's not properly fitted, but it won't hit the print part yet. That, that's something I could do later. But I wanted to see if that made any change. The answer? 210? Still good. I did a PNID, or a PID, I should say, PID calibration at 220 degrees Celsius and it worked great, no problem. Before, it was a struggle to even do a PID at 180 degrees. So in this case, 220, not a problem, didn't sweat it. 210, worked like, look, worked like a pro. So, right now, as you notice here, this is a temperature tower, so right now it dropped to 205, and now it's heating up to go to 205, this on the next layer. So the first print I did was a Benchy. All right, here's a Benchy with my current settings. I give this Benchy easily a nine out of a ten scale, strong. I did some pressing on the chimney; it wouldn't break off. Overall, smooth, nice. This is at a the resolution is 0 0.08 millimeters on layer height. But look here, that looks nice. And I left those, uh, the screen there, I could have cleaned it up, but I left it because this is my before, before doing any changes on settings. Oh, I did also change the E value, the E calibration for the extruder, the E extruder. Uh, this was stock 93, what's that, 93 steps per millimeter. And I did the calculation, measured out, and it was off. Using an original motor, original gear, and original metal hot end, right? Oh, I had to change that, the plastic one was broken. And it turned out to be 101. That was interesting. I had used this printer before, never checked that out, because in theory, same motor, I got this from another machine, uh, same gears, same number. No, nope, not in this case. Didn't work like that. Actually, I did the E step, E step calibration. 100 millimeters was measured, and that's the same amount that went through. So the Benchy turned out nice, as you can see. And then I decided to do. Oh, here's another view. I decided to do a temperature calibration tower, or a temperature tower. Not calibration, temperature tower, I apologize. Well, right now I know this filament I've been using to filament at 190 degrees. Right now it's at 205, and I want to see what is the maximum temperature or my optimum temperature to avoid stringing, improve uh, layer adhesion, and to make sure it looks nice. Should have done that before, but uh, you know how it goes. Sometimes you're just plain lazy, at least I am. Is something like that. Well, I went online, I Google search G codes N3 Pro. And there's a lot of these G codes ready for temperature tower. Thing is, when I popped in the SD card, came over here to the home direction, started purging, went all the way to the back, kept on leaking or extruding, I should say, like crazy. It was above the plate, got to that corner, and it kept on building. One of these codes made the gantry go all the way up. I don't know. That's another G code. Same pattern. Then it's stuck there. It was a nightmare. 
I thought I had done something wrong. But yet I was able to turn to Benji. So I go back. Let me go to Prusa Slicer. Go to Prusa Slicer. I Google search. Someone gave some good information how to do that. And that's what I did. And so far I'm checking, this is the layer for 205 degrees Celsius, and it is at 205 degrees Celsius. If you notice it's heating, turned off. This is how good this machine is once it's tuned in. It plays with a PID. And it's, the PID comes from Marlin. Don't think it's the, the machine. The machine will help, but Marlin is a pretty nice, to say the least, awesome program. I, I wish I was the one who wrote this out, but I'm, unfortunately, I'm not that smart. But still, very good to see that. 205, 205. I'm certain at decimal point, it is shifting down. But as soon as it reaches its minimum, there it is. It's on. Sometimes I look at this number when I was doing this. Uh, this Benchy. And all I would see was the constant number. I was printing, I printed this at, what was that? I think it was 190. There was 190 all the way. And this one started at 220, sorry, 225. It was straight all the way once it was stable. Shifted over to 220, stable. 215, stable. 210 as well. And now 205. Alright, so my intention is not to keep you here babbling, uh, just to show you how it's doing after this. It will be a standard calibration cube. Measure that. If I have to adjust the the X or the Y or do even the Z, I'll do that. Once the calibration cube is done, I have another a mini all-in-one test. Check overhangs and other other things that a particular STL does. But I won't do those until I know what's my optimum temperature for this filament. After I have that. It's another Benchy to see how it all turns out after it's been set. And then I'm ready to print. Hopefully the electricity is still here so I can keep on doing this. Alright, if there's anything weird out, out of normal, I'll just do another video. Again, this video is not a professional video. This is an amateur video. I just use an old phone that I have. So the quality is, I think it's an SD, so don't expect too much from it. If you need any information or you have a similar setup and you have questions or if you have any comments or suggestions, feel free. Feel free to let me know. All right. Uh, another thing also, before I end up, the temperature is kind of running cool. It is hot. I mean, I'm not going to say it's not, but compared to my other enders, relatively cool. I should put a heat sink on it. All right. Well, everyone, enjoy. Have fun with your printers. Have fun with your prints. Have fun with the family. In general, have fun in life. Remember, as I like to say, print, build, and enjoy. All right. So long, everyone.